Ceremony. Attention. Madam Supervisor, the ceremony is ready and the cemetery has been dressed. I'd like to start things off by offering recognition and appreciation to those that make this ceremony possible. Special thanks to the Memorial Day Committee, Jim McCauley, David Ergerton, Barbara Jenkel, Michael Finkelstein, and Eric Rosenfeld. And a very special thanks to Jill Shapiro and Tiffany White, who make yeoman effort every year to make this so special. I'd also like to thank the Newcastle Police Department Chappaqua and Millwood Fire Departments. Extra thanks for them for dressing the cemetery. Chappaqua Volunteer Ambulance Corps, Newcastle Department of Public Works, Chappaqua Scout Troops 1 and 2, and Girl Scout Troop 1024. Also like to thank the Girl Scouts for planting these memorial flowers right here at Chappaqua train station to honor our fallen heroes. Thanks also to Sari Shaw and the Westchester Living Team for sponsoring the flowers. I'd also like to recognize and thank our Newcastle Town Board, Supervisor Ivy Poole, Deputy Supervisor Jeremy Salen, Lisa Katz, Lauren Levin, and Lori Morton. I'd also like to welcome and thank Westchester County Legislature, Vadat Gashi, for attending as well. And I'd like to thank and welcome all other dignitaries in attendance at this special day, at this special ceremony. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to be with you. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium Reverend Dr. Martha Jacobs of the First Congregational Church for our invocation. Good morning. Would you kindly join me now in prayer? Oh, holy God, as we begin our time together today by pausing for a moment of silence to remember the many, many people who have died during this pandemic. God, we pray for their families and for all who continue to be affected by this pandemic. And we also pause to give thanks for all of the first responders and frontline workers who have kept us going and for the vaccine that enables us to be here today. So let us now take a moment of silence. God, as we gather to remember those who have died in service of our country, May we be mindful that the sacrifices that were made by these brave men and women and their families continue to this day. They remind us that America is a great country, but we can never take that for granted. God, we need to be willing to place personal needs aside in order to promote a greater good for all, just as those who fought and died showed us by their commitment to our country. We give great thanks for this community and for all who help us to remember that democracy gives us freedoms. But God, it also requires that we step up when the need arises, ensuring that our government represents the needs of people who cannot always voice for themselves the rights and privileges that we hold so dear and sometimes take for granted, for which so, so many have died. And so we pause to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice during this ceremony today. And we also give thanks for those who are with us today who have served our country. They did so with honor and we are so grateful for them as well. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask members of Girl Scout Troop 1024 to present the wreath to honor our fallen veterans. Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize Gold Star mothers, fathers, wives, husbands, and families, as well as our local Iraqi and Afghanistan veterans and veterans of all wars. 
I'd also like to recognize the following Newcastle veterans and Gold Star family members in attendance. First, Mr. and Mrs. Che and QT Che, welcome and so thankful that you're here with us today. Veterans Ronald Faelia, Albert Tucker, and I'd like to give a special thanks to Lieutenant William Wickin, who's right here in the front row with us today. He'll be 100 years old in a few days. He's a World War II veteran. <laughs> Round of applause, please. He's here with his wonderful wife, Joan. And uh, Lieutenant Wickin flew B B-24s out of Italy in World War II and bombed Nazi oil refineries in Austria. So uh, when I say his name and I see him in front of me, I get chills up and down my spine. Let's all give another round of applause. Thank you. We can never thank you enough. The greatest generation is with us. Thank you. Jamal Othman, uh, Sean Higgins, William Roche, Michael Rosenhack, David Brucklocker, and uh, Green Beret and West Point graduate Drew Coogan. At this time, I'd like to ask Kevin Moore to play Amazing Grace on the bagpipes to honor and remember our fallen heroes. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask Georgiana Lichtenthal to sing our national anthem. time I'd like to ask Gramercy Burton up to the podium Gramercy represents Girl Scout Troop 1079 and will read, be reading an oral history Gramercy will be doing Staff Sergeant Q Che, 3rd Special Forces Group Airborne Operation Enduring Freedom Afghanistan Chang, Staff Sergeant Hugh H. Chang, was born in 1972 in the ancient South Korean city of Daegu. 
Paiute crew and his family left the land of the morning column for America and eventually settled in the New York village of Mount Pisco. As he grew to adulthood, he took great pride not only in his South Korean heritage, but also in the fact that he had become an American citizen. He graduated from the State University of New York, Albany, and attended the Brooklyn School of Law. However, in January of 2001, Q would forego his law studies to devote himself to the cause of freedom and join the U.S. Army. After initial training in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and advanced language studies at Monte, California, he was assigned to the 313th Military Intelligence Battalion of the 82nd Airborne Division. His unit was tasked, tasked with developing the capability to obtain critical information from its adversaries while protecting friendly forces. Knowing enemy intentions not only increases the odds of victory, but also raises the chances that those in harm's way will one day be able to return home to their families. Due to his background in special forces, Che was an accomplished warrior. Moreover, he was equally adept in the world of linguistics and cryptology. From his earliest days of language training, he exhibited a passion to hone his craft. Many times, while stationed in remote areas, his fellow soldiers would complain of boredom. Che, however, welcomed the downtime, seeing it as just another opportunity to study with the aim of improving his linguistic talents. In 2006, Staff Sergeant Che deployed in Afghanistan with the 1st Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group, Airborne, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. The battalion, known as the Desert Eagles, performed brilliantly and was recognized for its aggressiveness on the battlefield as well as its humanitarian efforts. On October 28th, while on patrol in the Oruzgay region, the vehicle in which Staff Sergeant Che was traveling hit an improvised explosive device, killing him and bringing to, to an end the life of a dedicated father, soldier, and patriot. He left behind a devoted wife, son, and daughter who were the very foundation and essence of his existence. His life was cut short, but his success as a citizen, a father, and a soldier has left an indelible mark that will be long be remembered by those lucky enough to have known and worked with him. Staff Sergeant Hugh H. Che is buried at the Arlington National Cemetery, Virginia, Section 60, Site 8456. Thank you, Gramercy. Round of applause. Now I'd like to welcome Erica Dunn to the podium. Erica will be representing Chappaqua Scout Troop 1029, Girl Scout Troop 1029. William Vance Moss was born on November 2nd, 1945 in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. His family later moved to Chappaqua where they lived on Millwood Road. As a teenager, William attended Boys Philly High School with his younger brother. He played basketball and soccer, at which he was exceptionally good, according to his brother. He left Greeley to attend the private school in upstate New York, graduating in June 1963. In January 1964, he left home for basic training at Paris Island to become a Marine. After completing basic, he transferred to the 1st Infantry Training Battalion at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Once he was thoroughly prepared to perform his duties as a Marine, he was assigned to the 1st Marine Division, 7th Marine Regiment, as a photo interpreter in a headquarters company. His unit arrived in Vietnam on December 1st, 1965. Almost immediately they moved out, becoming part of Operation Harvest Moon, a major offensive operation designed to clear the Viet Cong out of the area between Chu Lai and Da Nang. On December 18th, on the last leg of its long trek to their destination, Units of the 2nd Battalion encountered heavy resistance near the village of Phi Phu. The Viet Cong enemy allowed Company G, the lead unit of the column, to pass through the village and then opened up with a heavy volume of small arms fire. Enemy mortars began to drop on William Moss's company in the open rice paddies. Two companies of the Viet Cong attempted to enter the gap created between Company F and the headquarters and supply company to split the Marine units. The battle between the opposing forces raged on for several hours until the enemy was beaten at their attempt to destroy the Marines and retreated into the darkness of the night, leaving 104 of their dead on the battlefield. 
Regrouping in a defensive perimeter, the Marines evacuated their dead and wounded comrades. Corporal Moss was found wounded in a rice paddy. He was first evacuated to Chu Lai that night, then to Da Nang. A day later, he was transferred to the hospital at Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. He died there on December 21st, 1965, of the gunshot wounds he had sustained. He was buried at Arlington National Cemetery, Section 35, Plot 582. He received the Purple Heart, Republic of Vietnam Service Medal, Republic of Vietnam Campaign Service Medal, and the National Defense Service Medal. May his courage and commitment to service inspire us and be our guide. Thank you, Erica. It's like we've got a little sunshine. At this time, I'd like to call Jim McCauley, Captain Jim McCauley and Lieutenant Colonel Michael Finkelstein to join me in reading the honor roll Newcastle veterans killed in defense of our great country. <clears throat> World War II, David Chittenden, Richard Cook, David Corrigan, James Corsi, Ralph Gunsberg Jr., Gerard Held, Thomas Hill, Peter Lynch, Erwin Orser, Gustav Ruckert Jr., Robert Slater, William Viscomi, Max Weinberg, Andre Whalen, Edward White Jr. World War I, Sante Flizola, Frederick Wallington, Operation Enduring Freedom, Staff Sergeant Hugh, Hugh Che. Korean War, Charles Pouget. Vietnam War, William Moss, Hugo Winterhalter, Jr. Ceremony, at ease. All right. I think uh, might be some divine intervention coming. We got some sunshine. Thank you again all for attending this special day in our country and a special day in our town. This is phase two in our community's mission to get our Great Towns Memorial Day Parade back to 100% full force. Phase one, last year we adapted the COVID crisis to the COVID crisis and pulled together to build a 2020 virtual parade video this year, we're in person, albeit in limited numbers, for this 2021 Memorial Day ceremony. Phase three, next year we will complete our mission and look forward to seeing everyone attending a full 2022 Memorial Day parade to remember, honor, and revere our fallen American veterans that sacrificed their lives for our liberty. As I've done before in previous years, I'd like to take the time right now to ask all of you parents to give your children a big hug. Fantastic. For there are children and parents who cannot hug each other today because they made the ultimate sacrifice in giving their lives in defense of our country. As we reflect on those fellow Americans that gave their lives for our liberty, let us also reflect on what we can do in our lives as parents, sons, daughters, coaches, mentors, colleagues, citizens, to honor our fallen veterans today and every day. Let us reflect on what makes ourselves, our families, our community, and our country worthy of the supreme sacrifice that our fallen heroes made for us. As I reflect on this, I'm reminded of what was said 
by an infantry captain in North Africa in World War II before going to battle against the Nazis. Almighty God, as we prepare for action from which some of us may not return, we place our faith and trust in Thee. We do not pray for victory, nor even for our individual safety, but we pray for help that none of us will let a comrade down. That each of us may do his duty to himself, his comrades, and his country, and so be worthy of our American heritage. Be worthy of our American heritage. Be worry, worthy of our American heritage. What does it mean to be worry, worthy of our American heritage? What can we do every day in ways big and small to be worthy of our American heritage? From Saratoga to Fort McHenry, to Gettysburg, to the Somme River, to the Ardennes Forest, to Chosun Reservoir, to Quezon and Kai Fu, to Fallujah, to Tora Bora, and Staff Sergeant Che to Erzgan, and many more places in harm's way around the world. Americans have performed amazing acts of valor and service to our great country. Those acts are worthy of our American heritage. These acts of selfless service performed by our fellow Americans throughout our history should serve as sources of inspiration and motivation for us to honor them by doing our best to serve our family, to serve our community, and to serve our great country. There are many brilliant people throughout history who have eloquently advised us regarding this selfless service, which is so deeply embedded in our American heritage. Albert Einstein said, the true value of a human being can be found in the degree to which he has attained liberation from the self. Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. As we reflect with reverence and appreciation on all those that gave their lives for our liberty on this most special day in our great country, let us also commit to doing our best to honor them by doing our best to serve our family, to serve our community, and to serve our country. As we all pull together as Americans, we're Americans, we're not Americanots. And as we pull out of this COVID crisis, let's look for ways to be worthy of our American heritage. And therefore, worthy of the supreme sacrifice of those fellow Americans who gave their lives for our liberty. Let's look for ways to make our United States of America more united. Let's never give up, always adapting, overcoming, improving with American grit and resilience. Let's look for ways to find new opportunities to serve others. Let's look for ways to have a positive impact in everything we do as Americans. And let's always endeavor to do what is right. I wish all of you and your families a very enjoyable and thoughtful Memorial Day. God bless our fallen veterans and their families. God bless our community of Newcastle. And God bless the United States of America, the land of the free because of the brave. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call the ceremony to attention and ask Joe Sabia to perform taps. Ceremony, attention!
Ceremony at ease. Now I'd like to invite Jordana Lichtenthal back to the podium to sing God Bless America. Thank you, Jordana. At this time, I'd like to invite Reverend Dr. Martha Jacobs back to the podium for our benediction. Would you kindly join me in prayer? Holy God, as we leave this Memorial Day ceremony, may we not forget that this community is greater when we come together to ensure that our community and country reflect all of those who died while serving our country, women and men of all different religious beliefs, social standing, skin colors, and nationalities. Oh God, may peace prevail, not only in this community, but in our world. We give deep thanks for all who have given their lives as this country of ours moves forward, despite the difficulties we have faced over the days, the weeks, the months, the years, and the centuries, during which people have given the ultimate sacrifice to keep us, and our country say, God, may we go in peace. May shalom fill our hearts and lead us to care for and respect all people. Amen. Amen. Ceremony, attention. Ceremony dismissed. Thank you for all coming. Enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day. God bless America.